What's up, everybody? We are Dale and Carrie Spoonmore, the creators of From Sea to Spoon, and we are going to give you a tour of our backyard urban Oklahoma garden. So here we go. All right, let's go. Okay, so coming into the garden area, we had to build this fence to keep our dog out. So we built this, and now we use this fence um, kind of a structure, so we have morning glories going up this side. It's just a nice little area over here. So coming in over here, we have one of our raised beds that's up on legs, and we don't really have much in it now. We're going to have mostly salad greens and stuff like that. I don't think I'm going to go into too much detail on everything. It's going to be like an hour-long video if I explain everything. So I think let's just kind of walk through, and I'll just kind of, just kind of pan around, and we'll just talk about what our strategy is right now and what we're doing. So everything we have out here right now is stuff that is from the summer. We um, we took most of the summer off, really. Like, we didn't really spend much time out here. We planted a bunch of stuff that would grow throughout the summer and that would do well, like southern peas and uh, other types of beans. And we've got basil and other herbs and there's cucumbers. And But really, most of what you see out here is uh, a mix of, of southern peas, uh, which are just a... They're, 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 they're like beans, except they they do a lot better in the heat than the, the other beans. I, I mean, I can show you over here. So let me, you know, you know it'll be an hour long video if I don't focus on it. So um, these are some southern peas here. So we got a couple different varieties going. Some that don't vine uh, as much and kind of just go about three or four feet tall and stop. Stink bugs. Um, and then these other ones that vine and attach to trellises. So we have these trellises of cattle panels kind of everywhere around the garden and that's what they vine up so the kids go through and yeah she's going through and <laughs> oh bug huh yeah it's a bad bug it's a stink bug stink bug yep good job we got to give her a quarter for that i think that counts right she found a bug okay she's investigating now not anymore it's not it's not a stink bug anymore. Now it's compost. Find some more. So, oh, sorry, Bubba. What else do we have out here? We have some stuff from the spring that we just haven't pulled up yet, like this broccoli over here. It's not really uh, edible anymore. We really, really need to go through and just chop it down. We had carrots through here. Uh, we're going to be planting more fall stuff uh, in here now, some more carrots and peas. It's really hot here in Oklahoma. We had another hot stretch pop up. So I'm gonna wait until it cools back down a little bit before we plant most of that. Um, but really, I mean, this was, it was pretty awesome because the summer we basically, we vacationed a lot. We took our RV all over and we had these watering stations set up. So I bought these tripod um, sprinkler head things from Ace Hardware, I think we got these. And then I had these set up on an automated irrigation. So we had four of these around the garden. I had that set to run every three days or I don't know, I think it was an hour on each one. I don't remember, it, depend, it depended on how hot it was and everything, but that handled basically everything out here. And we, we were free to go have fun and, and this grew itself. So it's a bit of a jungle right now. That's why you see it's kind of overgrown everywhere and stuff, but I don't mind it. It's pretty awesome actually. And just imagine walking through here as a junior right now from his perspective and these peppers are twice the size of him. I mean, he's just growing up in this magical world out here and that's one, it's one of the reasons why we like having this out here. So let's talk more about specifics of what we're growing. Um, I mean, everything is out here right now. It'd be too late to get started on your own, but I guess this can give you an idea of what's possible in, in your backyard if you start this stuff, you know, next April. So a lot of this stuff we started in April and literally, I, I, I'm not even kidding. Almost everything out here that's a southern pea was planted from me walking over here, taking a handful of them and just throwing them around the garden one day. Literally just tossing them when I was just frustrated and the garden was empty and I wanted there to be food everywhere. So I just started throwing seeds everywhere. And then this happened. So, um, so yeah, that's literally how we planted most of this stuff. It's outside of the raised beds at least. So inside of the raised beds, we also have more peppers. Uh, the peppers we, we uh, bought as transplants are started indoors and then transplanted them in April and they're kind of scattered around. I need to do some pruning because the, these beans are starting to hide some of the, the light from the peppers. But uh, like I said, it's, it's a jungle out here. Um, over here, 
We've got our area of smart pots. You can't even really see the smart pots now because they're hidden from all the stuff that's inside of them. But again, we've just got peppers scattered around. I don't know, we, we harvested most of these the other day. Um, so they don't have a lot of new ones on there yet. To check out on our Facebook, we had a bunch of videos showing us harvesting and stuff. I guess we'll pull some of that video and put it in here too. Um, more Southern peas over here, basil, peppers. I mean, it's just stuff everywhere. Um, this is squash that's growing up here. I don't even know the variety of squash yet. I'm waiting for it to produce some fruit and then we'll be able to tell what it is. It's possible it's a loofah that came up on its own from last year, maybe. I don't know. It's either that or one of those Korean squashes that we planted. Um, not entirely sure. Over here is our cattle panel trellis that we um, we tried out, and I never got around to planting anything on it. But it was fine because we had beans from last year that came up on their own, found the trellis, and then did this because uh, we had beans planted over in this area last year. So this we just built the trellis, and then the beans found it, and here they are. So, but you can see that they're starting to do better. Here, can you come show this, Carrie, and show how these beans are good? It's pretty cool. Like, they're just hanging, you know, from here. It's, they're, um, and this really helps the beans out because the beans that we grew before, you know, they, um, they were always exposed to sun in some way, shape, or form because they were on the side. We weren't trellising in this way, but, but when the beans can hang down, you know, the leaves shade the beans and it helps the flowers from dropping it. It seems like even in the extreme heat, we've had more pole beans than we did whenever we grew them just vertically. So uh, I think this is going to be, I think all of these are just going to be bean trellises from now on. It's just so simple to grow that, grow them this way. We've also got these yard long beans that we planted last year. And uh, again, they, uh, they just kind of came up on their own. Um, I remember when we harvested some of them last year, I uh, I took some of the, the seeds and kind of scattered them around here, just kind of seeing what would happen, and, and it worked out. So we've got over, where are they? I, I see them everywhere, and then when I try and find them, I can't find them. Yeah, you see them? Okay, cool, yeah, you see them here. These are these yard-long beans, and these are pretty awesome. Awesome squash bugs. Hey, Junior, where's your basket? Hey, he's harvesting zip ties. <laughs> well, I mean, they're kind of like beans. Here, put this with your uh, with your black beans there. There you go. <laughs> All right, so we've got some okra scattered around too. Uh, I feel like I've been saying jungle over and over, but it feels like I'm in a jungle. So anyway, let's look over here. We've got basil here. This is a, a giant sage bush that I need to trim back. Look at this, is sage everywhere. Um, cucumbers over here, more beans. Oh, we got nor yeah. So this was the other Nelly that had that giant cicada. We name, we name all of these, uh, orb weavers, Nelly Potato, um, based on the song Man Eater. Joke. <laughs> yep. Hey, there's a bumblebee, check it out. Let me see this. Oh. I've seen these things described as flying panda bears. And uh, I can definitely confirm. Look how close I can get to this. He does not care. I may try and pet one of these one day. They're so, they don't care. Like, they're just doing their own thing. Okay, it's enough bee footage. The B roll, as it as it yeah. is. Okay. Uh, this is my collection of chairs that I moved out of the way when I mowed. Move this out of the way. Okay, so coming over this direction. Um, over here we have a mix of smart pots, and through here we have a bunch of different herbs that we use in cooking. So you'll find thyme and chamomile. Oh, wait, there's chamomile for cooking, but we have thyme and oregano and rosemary and chives and basil and tarragon and uh, just all sorts of stuff scattered through here in these smart pots and we are if you haven't heard of these smart pots before check them out they are they're we, we have really had a lot of success in them uh oh weed ear in the way okay, 
so over here we have our blackberries along the back row and they have the trellis came down i've got to build a better trellis for these i, I should have learned my lesson last year yeah but it's gonna be fine there's gonna be blackberries all over these so it's yeah so this over here is mostly comfrey and we grow comfrey because uh, its roots go really, really deep, and it pull up nutrient, and it pulls up nutrients that a lot of other plants can't get to. And then it puts those nutrients into the leaves, and then we take the leaves, chop them down, throw them in our compost over here, and that's how it's one of our main ingredients in compost. And these leaves are really prolific, and they you can chop them at the base, and they just spring right back. So in this comfrey, it's pretty much taken over this whole bed. We started with just a back row. There's also some basil that we scattered through here. I just threw seeds and it's it's come up. So we have a mix of basil around here. There's another Nelly Furtado. Where's climbing in the compost? So this is our compost area over here. And I need to make a bunch more. It's been a while. Like I said, we took the summer off. I didn't really do anything out here. This all just happened on its own, which is pretty awesome. So when we first started, it took a lot of work to make things happen. And now it just kind of does it on its own. So. Uh, this is where uh, pretty soon we're going to start harvesting. In fact, I'll probably start doing it this week where we start harvesting this comfrey and put it over here and start making compost out of it. We'll make comfrey tea where we just soak it in water and use that to water our plants and uh, and do all of that because we're about to plant all of our fall stuff. So we need to go through and, and add nutrients back into the soil out there. And we'll do that by using this compost. And, um, and then once we use all this compost over here, we'll have to make new compost. So... Over here uh, are some more of our raised beds on, on legs. We put these in the shade because they dry out really fast in the summer. So this helps um, because they get shaded more. We're gonna be growing salad greens on here. Like I said, it's still, we had another hot stretch come up in Oklahoma. It's been in the 90s, um, bordering on 100 even. And it looks like that forecast is gonna continue for the next, at least week or two here in Oklahoma. So we're not gonna be planting any of our, any of our greens until it cools down a little bit, but, um, we are going through and getting these beds ready and adding in compost and just doing all of that. And I may go ahead and throw in a cover crop. Sorry, I'm itching like crazy. We've got mosquito bites out here. I got attacked by um, ticks at Lake Thunderbird uh, Lake here in Oklahoma a few weeks ago. So um, anyway, we have, um, right now we have some kale in here that was hung over from the spring. So I just kind of left it in there to see what it would do. We'll see how it compares to kale that we grow side by side that we plant here in a few weeks. Over here is uh, mostly all mint. We've planted a lot of different types of mint over here. And mint is evasive, and these are probably going to all grow together into one large mess. Uh, but I don't, I don't know if I really care. I'm kind of interested to see what happens if I just throw a bunch of different varieties of mint in here together and let them all grow. So um, we're hoping to start using mint a lot more in teas and drinks and things like that. I'm trying to get completely off of all drinks that are processed. Um, I've been pretty good about not having uh, like the standard sodas and whatnot, but I've had too many diet drinks and too many energy drinks and things like that. So I'm trying to get off of that and we're gonna use mints to help with that by making a lot of teas and stuff like that. This is bee balm here that was taking over out there. So I transplanted it over here to see what happened. And it has exploded. And because this area doesn't get as much sun as the other area, it's really gotten a lot taller, it seems, trying to get up into the sun. So at least then did over there. So this was one of those just kind of accidental plantings. I just moved something over. But I, I like how it's here. Like, I like the structure it provides. Um, I think it looks pretty cool. What do you think, Carrie? You like it? Yeah. It may not flower though. That might be the problem is it may not have enough light to flower. We'll see if these actually turn into, because bee balm last year had those like really beautiful flowers, but wasn't that like in the, in the early spring when they popped? It was one of the first things. It was when it was cold, like in, it was like in January or something. It's like the first thing. Yeah. So this would be interesting to see if it, if it does the same thing that it did last year. Um, over here we have our worm bin. So this is where we make a lot of our other fertilizer. We take kitchen scraps 
and stuff like that. Mix it with shredded paper and just all sorts of stuff. And there's worms all through here and they go through and they turn it into this stuff. There's one. So this is what we get from the worms. They go through and they eat all that kitchen waste and they turn it into this really, really good plant fertilizer. And the reason why I emphasize really, really good is because not only does it contain, you know, nutrients and stuff, but worms also produce growth hormones for plants. So whenever you add that in um, with, with your seeds, what we do is if we're planting seeds, we'll just scatter some on top or if we're planting one plant, like a transplant, like a tomato or a pepper, we'll put just a scoop in the bottom of the planting. And, and that just really seems to help get the plants off to a great start that in combination with compost. And that's all we use for fertilizer. In addition, we also do some, uh, some fish fertilizer. Uh, that's the only fertilizer we buy, but that's it. We don't do any other fertilizers for our, for our garden. Now we did start off with really good soil um, because we made the Mel's mix where we started with a, um, a mix of vermiculite, which is here, one third of this, one third of compost, and then one third of peat moss. So, yeah. So anyway, we have a guide on our website all about this rainwater collection system, how we built it, how do you can make it. It's about 600 gallons, I think, of rainwater collection here. It's all connected up into our gutters. So whenever it rains, it, these things fill up in a hurry. And we don't use this to irrigate our garden a whole lot, um, but it is nice to have a bunch of water on hand. And anytime I, I fertilize with the uh, fish emulsion or if I make um, some sort of compost tea or worm tea or something like that, I use water out of here um, because it's, uh, for one, the water is the same temperature as the plants, which um, can be important, especially if the plant is having issues and you're trying to nurse it. If you give it the water the same temperature as the air, it doesn't go through that shock. So that's why we like to use this kind of water, this kind of water, our collected rain water to do that. So um, anyway, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't think... Did I miss anything? Yeah, if there's something you want to see more of, let us know. And we can go through and shoot an individual video. Um, we've also got the... Let's show this, this side over here. So this was our main garden. Okay, so over here we have a, um, a bunch of smart pots around our patio with a mix of stuff around. We have a lot of herbs that we use to cook with, so like oregano. We have thyme, we have rosemary, we have, I think, some basil through here. We have some chives. By the way, chive flowers are incredible. They're better than the chives themselves. So, and this is the perfect time to, to eat them is right about now. Um, we've got sage through here, some pineapple sage. And the way that we grow these smart pots over here is we, come over on this side, I think it'd be the easiest way to show, is we have these kiddie pools that we kind of scrounge around and the, it's a perfect time to find them now on the side of the road because people are putting them out for like big trash and stuff. And so we kind of collect these and we put smart pots inside of them and then we fill them with a couple inches of water and that's how we irrigate. And we just kind of rotate smart pots around. Uh, I added this one over here yesterday, Karen. I don't think you've seen this one yet. So um, this has been a really handy way to grow. And especially, like I said, when the summer we were traveling a lot and we had a friend. Uh, that was house sitting for us and for her it was really easy to come out and just fill these up and that's all she had to do to work you know she didn't have to go through and set up this complicated irrigation system and all that and uh and really we're starting to get away from having all those complicated irrigation systems just because it's not that complicated you can just set up you know a sprinkler to run every couple of days and and yes there are concerns about getting leaves wet and stuff like that but there's strategies you can use to minimize the effects of that like watering in the morning and not watering every day and when you water water thoroughly and then wait for two days Things like that, and we've had a lot of success with that. So um, this is all part of our mission to show you that gardening doesn't have to be hard. You can grow your food without a lot of effort. This year, we have not put much effort into this garden. We have been coding and trying to build our business, and that's pretty much all we've been doing. And we haven't really been out here that much, And but it's it's just kind of taking care of itself. Um, we're starting to expand over this way too, and we're adding in more gardens over on this side. So I need to mow, and we're working on cleaning this up but we'll show more videos as we do this. And we'll probably be showing a lot more videos over here on this side of the yard, showing the small scale gardening. Cause I think this is what everyone else kind of wants to do. I, know, I realize I'm a little crazy, 
and I do things excessively and that most people don't want to go do all that stuff that we did over there. I get that. So that's why we wanted to test out over here and see, um, you know, growing on a small scale like this with these smaller smart pots. Like look at this tomato, this little baby smart pot. Well, it's growing really well. I mean, we just started this a few weeks ago, but um, we're, this, we're really having a lot of success on this small scale growing effort. And I think this is something that is gonna be easier for everyone else to do also. So we've been experimenting with this. We're having a lot of success. We're gonna be showing a lot more videos talking about all of this soon. And Carrie's gonna be showing a lot more videos talking about all this soon. And we're putting all this into our app. All right, so I think that's all we have to show for today. If there's anything you wanna know more about or anything you wanna see more from our garden, just let us know. We can come back and shoot more videos. And if you haven't checked out our mobile app, uh, go check it out. You can find it at, uh, you can search in the app store. If you search for growing food, actually, it's the number one search result now. We found that out a few months ago and it's pretty cool. Um, if you, um, you can also search for from seed to spoon and find it. If you go to seedtospoon.net, you can find links to the iOS and the Android versions. And you can also use our universal web version on our website that'll work on any device. So if you have a Kindle Fire, or if you have just a computer, then you can use it on there as well. And that's just app.seedtospoon.net. So let us know what you think. We're working on a lot of exciting new features. We're building out a new logging feature that lets you log everything that you plant and it'll help guide you through knowing what to do based on uh, how much it's rained where you are and it'll send you push alerts for when you need to plant and, and all sorts of things like that. That's what we're working on building out now. So we really want your help in building this. We want you to um, help us, uh, you know, build what needs to be the, the ultimate golden so gardening software. That, that's our goal is to build the absolute best gardening software, the software that we want to use the most. So help us build that. And um, yeah, we're really looking forward to this process. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And if you have any uh, feedback for us, please uh, just reach out to us on social media. Um, it really helps us out also if you can share these posts with your friends and, and tell your friends about it. If you hear of anyone that wants to grow food, please point them to our app. And that really, really helps us out a lot. And also leaving reviews in the app store is super beneficial. That really helps people find our app. And uh, yeah, just thank you to everyone that, that's already downloaded our app and that's used it and it's left, left feedback for us. So we'll try and do more of these throughout the fall as we're planting. I can't promise we'll do a lot. Um, I've got to come out here and just kind of record or not, I just got to come out here in the garden of my own sometimes and just, um, this is where I find my peace. And with the camera on me, it's hard to do that sometimes. So, um, but we'll try and be better about doing more videos and showing you what's going on. But Ultimately, everything we know ends up back in the app. We are always updating the app. Carrie, especially, every single day, she's adding new stuff into the app. So um, it's always changing in there. It's always getting better. So if there's ever something that you want to know about, uh, go check it out in the app. And if we don't have it in there, please reach out to us, and uh, we will make it a mission to get it in there. Carrie's pretty obsessive about trying to get everything in that is asked about. So um, thank you again. Thanks for watching, and um, see you later.